one small part of the charter. All the rest apply to anybody who's living and working in the uh, European Union. So, you know, I think they're fairly, <coughs> fairly positive rights. Um, the issue of health and education, the, uh, you know, services and, and the possible deregulation of those. I have to agree that I think there has been a tendency amongst, uh, or certainly at, at, at a European Union level, to uh, allow for governments to, to move in the direction of deregulation, liberalisation and privatisation of public services if they so choose. Uh, what you've seen happening is the veto on, on uh, the sort of right of, or the uh, ability of governments as opposed to block uh, the process whereby the European Commission puts forward different sectors uh, as part of international trade agreements and I think the whole trade policy of the European Union is one you know, I, I feel it needs a lot more transparency, a lot more debate, a lot more public scrutiny needs to happen because trade agreements <coughs> are signed up to and agreed and the public know very little about them. But very often what can happen is that large sectors of the economy can be offered up uh, for liberalisation and, you know, for private companies to come in and to start uh, delivering services. And again, it is something that I think Irish people, citizens across Europe are concerned about, the protection of their health and education services. But in the Lisbon Treaty, there's still, unanimity is still required in the area of health and education, meaning that every state still has a national veto. It's a weakened veto, because what it says is that if a state feels that it's the national organisation of its health or education services is going to be disrupted or disturbed, then it can exercise the veto. Now, people will argue, well, how does the state prove that by you know, opening up the particular health or education sectors or by including those sectors in an international trade agreement that it will disrupt the national organisation of those services. But the, the facility is there for national governments to actually uh, refuse to, to, uh, to, to look for a, a, you know, a vote, a unanimous vote uh, on any international treaty that involves health and education. So there are protections there. The issue really is what are our national governments doing on these or how are they voting on these issues? And I think we have to keep a much closer eye. And I think the kind of uh, you know, transparency that's going to become uh, part of the decision-making process and certainly at the Council of Ministers under the Lisbon Treaty, it's going to mean that when the Council of Ministers are you know, looking at legislation and making decisions, they have to do so in public. That's all going to help us to monitor to a much closer extent what's going on in Europe. But just last point, information about Europe. I really think we need a permanent information service about the European Union in most member states because you know, it really is like having a crash course on European affairs when a, a referendum campaign comes up in this country. And we're lucky that we have a referendum campaign in other you know, uh, countries where they have the, the method of approving or ratifying treaties by parliamentary uh, ratification and that's what their constitutions require, it means that people don't have the opportunity, you know, of going and voting and therefore the, the sort of incentive to educate yourself isn't there as fully. And so I would say the Irish people probably know as much or more about the European Union, how it works, its institutions and all the, you know, contested issues than many other people around the European Union do. So I think the issue of who provides <coughs> information about Europe and making sure there's a constant flow and not just in a month or two before uh, treaty uh, ratification processes. I think that's really important. And if we can debate who should be doing it, I think every member state should have its own uh, European information service and that that should be something that people can tap into on an ongoing basis. Anyway, maybe enough said on that. Thank, Thank you. you.